Hi there. Uh, my name is Zushi Rifkin, and I direct the Pasadena Jewish Academy at uh, Chabad of Pasadena. It's the educational arm here. We give the classes. And, and I want to take some time today to talk to you a little bit about honey. Um, you know, Rosh Hashanah is around the corner, and Jews around the world will be at their Rosh Hashanah table, together with their brisket, they'll have apples dipped in honey. Um, and you may not know this, but there are other customs with honey associated with Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. For instance, the Chabad custom is that on Erev Yom Kippur, the morning before Yom Kippur, we actually make a point of begging for honey cake. We ask the leader of the household or whoever it is that's giving it out, we ask them for honey cake. And all these things have great significance, and I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, and why it is that specifically honey is, uh, has become this symbol of sweetness and uh, all the lessons that we can learn from it. Um, so I'd like to take you along today for a little bit of a journey um, as I visit some of my constituents and my community members and bring them honey cake, which is another interesting custom of Rosh Hashanah. People uh, eat honey cake in addition to their apple dipped in honey. Uh, people will dip their challah in honey. Lots of exciting customs. Um, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about it as I prepare to go and visit some community members, introduce you to some people, and hopefully you'll learn something along the way. For instance, um, I don't know if you knew this, but um, when we eat the apple dipped in honey on Rosh Hashanah, one of the things that we specifically ask for in, 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 in the blessing, in the prayer that we say as we do so, we say, Yehi Ratzon, may it be the will of Hashem, Shetechadesh Aleinu, that you renew our year so that it be a year, a good and a sweet year. Those words you're probably familiar with. Shana Tova Umetuka. Jews around the world wish this to each other as the holiday approaches. But have you ever thought about the fact that we, we, we wish a good and a sweet year? What's the difference between good and sweet? That's just right. Check it out, it's got that apple, the honey cake, some honey in that little stick, and beautiful for social distancing, a honey stick. Um, the Kabbalist, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak, um, explains that the difference between good and sweet is that good is something that wasn't earned. It didn't come after challenges. It just is good, it's pure good. But throughout the year, we may have challenges, and we don't just want it to be a good year, we want it to be a sweet year. Sweetness is something that comes specifically through earning it. When do we call something sweet? Um, when, when we find that something is appreciated, when we find that something has come through hard work and through challenges, that's when something is sweet. All right, I think we're just about ready to go. Um, while we're heading to the car, I figured I would share with you a little bit about what sweetness means as a whole. You see, the Torah is called sweet. Uh, in fact, King David calls the words of the Torah sweeter than honey. You got it. They have known this. But when a child uh, is, starts his education, one of the customs is that we take the child to cheder. We take him to uh, a Jewish day school or a Jewish uh, you know, elementary or uh, um, you know, a place where, where Jewish children are learning Torah. And even before he can read, we begin to teach him the Aleph Bet. And the way that we do so is we take a chart that has the Aleph Bet on it and we ask him to read the first letter, Aleph. And as he reads it, we pour honey on it and he licks the honey off of the Aleph bet. And that's because we always want him to have a sweet association with the Torah. So why especially honey? Why not a spoonful of sugar, as Mary Poppins says? Well, you see, honey has some very unique physical qualities, which are reflected in its spiritual qualities. You see, one of the things that honey is unique at is absorbing and preserving its contents. In fact, the Talmud tells us about King Herod. Oh, looks like we got some doggies that are excited to see us. The Talmud tells us about King Herod, who wanted to preserve something. He managed to preserve it for seven years um, by, by putting it in honey. That's the same thing we're looking for when it comes to the high holidays. We want God to take whatever sweetness it is, whatever good things we're supposed to have this year and preserve them. That they shouldn't just be fleeting good blessings, but they should be good blessings that last with us for a while. Let's see if Robin is home. Seems like she's not, so we'll leave it at her door. She knows the only person in town that'll be leaving an apple with honey for her. Hey, so I'm at my next location and um as I'm waiting for Buzz, who told me he's going to come out, I figured I would share with you guys some of the places in Jewish history, or at least in the Torah, where we see honey. Um, 
Of course, the land of Israel um, has seven fruits with which the land of Israel is blessed. And one of them is honey. Um, specifically dates honey there, that's not bees honey. And we'll talk a little bit more about that significance later, about why on Rosh Hashanah we try to have bees honey specifically. Um, but another place is Samson's Riddle. You may have heard, the, may have heard of this, you may have not. Um, but when Samson, the mighty Jewish prophet, um, was waging his war against the Philistines, one of the things that he did was he used a story from his past in order to teach them about sweetness coming out of strength. Um, Samson had at one point slain a lion. And when he came later to that same spot, he saw bees uh, producing honey within the carcass. And his riddle to them was, you know, out of the strong comes sweet. Um, and I think this is extremely significant because that's what we're looking for uh, on Rosh Hashanah. We're looking for sweetness out of everything in our lives. We're looking for hard-earned goodness, not just goodness that comes naturally, but goodness that um, is, it, it, com it comes from what the Kabbalah, the secrets of the Torah, the mystical side of the Torah calls sweetening the severities. So there might be some gezerah, some decree that was supposed to happen to us that might be far from positive. Um, but when we, whether it's eating honey or the significance behind the honey, what we're looking for is that God should sweeten those severities and make this year a sweet year, not just a good year. Let's talk more about it in a second. Here you go, Buzz. Thank you, Zushi. I want to wish you a Shana Tova and Mutuka, a happy, happy, a good, and a sweet new year. Oh, thank you so much. All right. Hey, so I'm uh, back in the car and I'm actually headed out to do some shopping. I'm pulling up to Trader Joe's and I figured I'd take you guys along for the ride and talk a little bit about different types of honeys that there are and whether there's any significance in Judaism to different types of honeys. Um, so let's start off right here in the car. Let's talk a little bit about the significance of bees honey. Uh, some of you may not know this, but you can get honey from other places. Uh, even when the land of Israel is blessed with honey, uh, the land of Israel is actually blessed with uh, date honey, which is some, some form of a honey that comes from the juice, I guess, or the stickiness and the sweetness of uh, dates. Um, but with regards to the honey for Rosh Hashanah, we try to get bees honey specifically. Uh, and one of the reasons for this is because bees have a negative side to them as well. You know, one of the phrases that's found in Jewish literature is lo mi um, I don't want your honey and I don't want your stink. It goes well in English too. And while that's usually used as a negative phrase, but there's something positive about honey coming from an animal that stinks. Um, you know, if you were to ask anybody that uh, has an allergy to bees, they would have a very negative association. And there's some very negative energy to a bee. Um, and the honey, the sweetness that comes from um, an animal that could be so negative is reminiscent of what we're looking for on Rosh Hashanah. You know, we're looking for a sweet new year that despite anything that might be destined to be negative for this year, we want to have a positive and sweet new year. Uh, but there's more to it. I'm going to put my mask on and let's head inside Trader Joe's and we'll see if we can find some other significance to honey. What do you say? Come along. So, a little bit of trivia, the Trader Joe's that we're heading into right now is actually the first Trader Joe's. Yep, Trader Joe's was founded here in Pasadena. This is the original one. Not that there's anything different about it, but um, they do have, you know, some nice things. Uh, welcome. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll grab a cart right here. Yeah, I just have a couple signs out. That's it. So, I'm pretty sure the, the honey is down this aisle. Uh, let's just check it out. What was that? No, no, I got it. Uh, right here, here we go. That's the sweet section we're looking for. Maple syrup. Uh, lots of different types of maple syrup. Um, here we go. Honey. Isabel's honey. Orange blossom. I don't see a kosher sign on that, so we'll leave that one as is. Multi-floral. And clover honey. That one's kosher, but not what I'm looking for. Organic honey. 
Uh, lots of different types here. That's what I'm looking for. Raw honey, and it's got an OU on it. And I want to talk about that a little bit. Why don't we do that right here? I hope you can hear me. Hear me. Uh, I know I'm wearing a mask, but um, honey is one significance. But then there's something to the fact that the honey is raw. You see, the word raw in Hebrew is actually chai, which means life. Um, so it's got that double entendre right there. You know, it means raw and it means life. And using raw honey specifically kind of gives us that idea that we're looking for more life this year, right? Uh, Rosh Hashanah, we know there are two books open. There's the Book of Life and the Book of the Opposite. And we want to be inscribed in the Book of Life. Um, and so using raw honey kind of gives us that uh, extra dosage of meaning. In addition to the sweet, it's also honey of life. Well, that's it for now. Um, I hope that you've learned something along this journey with me about the significance of honey in Judaism. Uh, I also wanted to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Marvin and Steven Eisenstadt of uh, the In The Raw Company and Honey In The Raw. How appropriate for our uh, episode. If you haven't read about them yet, you can read about it in the current Just Jewett magazine, In The Raw. And I hope that now you have a deeper appreciation of what it means when we wish each other each year Shana Tova Umetuka. May you have a good and a sweet New Year.